In church Christ is risen he is risen indeed hallelujah amen 
and welcome to Community United Methodist Church. My name is Brian, and I'm one of the pastors at Community, and we're so excited that you could join us for this Easter Sunday as we're broadcasting from all kinds of different places today as we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. And we're not going to have a great deal of announcements today, but I just wanted to start our worship uh, by lifting up a psalm, a song of the Hebrew people, uh, just to begin our celebration of resurrection today. Hear these words from Psalm 118. Give thanks to the Lord because he is good, because his faithful love lasts forever. Let Israel say it, God's faithful love lasts forever. The Lord was my strength and my protection. He was my saving help. The sounds of joyful songs and deliverance are heard in the tents of righteousness. The Lord's strong hand is victorious. The Lord's strong hand is ready to strike. The Lord's strong hand is victorious. I won't die. No, I will live and declare what the Lord has done. Yes, the Lord has definitely disciplined me but he didn't hand me over to death. Open the gates of the righteous of righteousness for me so I can come and give thanks to the Lord. This is the Lord's gate. Those who are righteous enter through it. I thank you because you answered me, because you were my saving help. The stone rejected by the builders is now the main foundation stone. This has happened because of the Lord. It is astounding in our sight. This is the day the Lord acted. We will rejoice and celebrate in it. Now let's continue our worship together. The moon and stars, they wept. The morning sun was dead. The Savior of the world was fallen his body on the cross his blood poured out for us the weight of every curse upon him yeah. Final breath he gave as heaven looked away, the Son of God was laid in darkness. A battle in the grave, one final breath he gave, the Son of God forever broke. The ground began to shake, the stone. We sing hallelujah, 
We sing hallelujah, the Lamb is overcome. We sing hallelujah, we sing hallelujah, we sing hallelujah, the Lamb I would like to invite you to open your hearts and your minds as we go to God in prayer. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, maker of covenants, restorer and giver of life and grace, today we come together in this season of social distancing on, by, by the blessings of technology to celebrate the story of your son, Jesus, who wasn't in the tomb. He wasn't dead, but he is alive. And God, we have to ask for your help today. Help to remember that at the beginning of the story, those who went to the tomb expected to find Jesus there. We have to help us to remember that they weren't going expecting this grand story. They weren't expecting what you were doing in the world. But God, you made a way when we couldn't see one. And so we ask that you would do that once again, that you would come into our world, that you would come into our lives, and that you would bring resurrection power into the world, power to heal and bring wholeness to what seems incredibly broken. God, we have many of those in our community in need. We have many um, who haven't heard your good news and who are anxious and afraid. Help us not to be afraid. Help us to rely on your power. Help us to trust in your grace. God, we need you. We always have. We always will. And we remember Jesus' promise after his resurrection to be with us always to the end. So God, we just ask and pray and seek you in all things so that Jesus might be first in everything, so that we might celebrate his resurrection in everything. So God, help us to live lives that way. Help us to be those Easter people. And now, with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. <laughs>
Easter is not canceled. Maybe you've heard that. Maybe you've thought that in recent weeks. But no, Easter is not canceled. Of course, Easter services aren't happening here in the church in person this year. We don't get to dress up and see our sisters and brothers in Christ. We don't get to sing our favorite resurrection hymns together in one live, unified voice. But Easter is still Easter. Easter has still come. Easter is not canceled. For even now, perhaps especially now, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Easter has happened. Easter is happening. And the hope of Easter is more important now, more meaningful in our lives, more necessary to be celebrated, and more important to be shared today than maybe ever before in our lifetimes. Sisters and brothers in Christ, we need to celebrate and the world needs to hear that Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Would you pray with me? Almighty God, we give you thanks for the gift that is Easter. We give you thanks for the hope of resurrection, the gift of new life. And God, as I come now to bring your Easter message to an empty sanctuary. I pray, God, that you would use these words and make your word not return void. Give us, once again, God, the joy, the hope of Easter. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm going to give you a chance to go find your family Bible and turn with me to the book of Matthew, chapter 28. We're in the book of Matthew chapter 28, and I want to read to you this account of the Easter story. Matthew chapter 28, starting in verse 1. After the Sabbath, which was Saturday, at dawn on the first day of the week, which was Sunday morning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake. For an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, do not be afraid for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. 
then go quickly and tell his disciples, he has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid and yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, clasped his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. Friends, this is the word of God. For us, the people of God. So let us respond. Thanks be to God. Christ is risen. The tomb is empty. And our lives are changed forever. Even now. Perhaps especially now. God has come to earth as Jesus Christ to rescue and redeem fallen humanity. And even though our sins sent him to the cross to be crucified, not even death could keep Jesus down. Death could not keep its hold on him. Because of the resurrection, because of Easter, Jesus proves his sovereignty. Jesus proves his lordship over all the universe. The risen Jesus promises our sins are forgiven. The risen Jesus promises our eternal life in heaven is assured, even as he promises to walk with us through all the ups and downs of this mortal life on earth as well. Because Christ is risen, we have confidence to face whatever this world can throw at us, doesn't mean it's always going to be easy, but it, but it does mean God is going to see us through. Because of Easter, we have confidence that even death is not the end. Death was not the end for Jesus, and because of Jesus, death is not the end for us. The good news of the resurrection, the good news of Easter means that we who have Jesus as our Savior need not have any fear of life or death for ourselves or for our loved ones, even for those who have preceded us into glory. Because Christ is risen, it means we have a confidence that we can face anything this world can throw at us. We can face the future with assurance that in the end, everything is going to be okay. Doesn't mean everything's going to be okay in the middle, but in the end, Christ promises everything's going to be okay. And at Easter, he proves it. Yes, we're going to have bad days and bad weeks and bad months and perhaps bad years at times. But the promise of the resurrected Jesus Christ is that the trials of this life, no matter how bad they may seem in the middle, are only temporary and God wins in the end. The promise of heavenly glory awaits with everlasting paradise to those of us who have been born anew into the resurrection life Jesus offers us by God's grace, which we access through faith. We have confidence at Easter that God has won. And so anything that looks like defeat is only temporary. God wins in the end. And if it doesn't look like that, we're probably still in the middle. Because Christ has risen, we now have a new and better perspective on this life and all the nonsense we experience while we're here. We're going through that now. We now have a new perspective, a better perspective, a heavenly, eternal perspective that raises our eyes above all the trials of life, all the worries and doubts and fears we experience in sharp contrast to the knowledge of God's promise of eternal victory. Not only does Easter give us confidence for the life to come, but Easter, the risen Christ, gives us confidence for life 
here and now. Easter means we now have a new God-given purpose, a reason for being, a reason to get out of bed in the mornings. We have a mission to accomplish with our short time here on earth. And when we learn and live into that God-given purpose, that God-given intention for our lives, friends, there we find a satisfaction and a joy that we could never find before in a godless life. Now we can wake up every morning knowing we are not a mistake, but we are here on purpose, for a purpose, a good, godly, divine purpose, to glorify God and to share God's goodness with a world that so desperately needs it. Friends, just look around and you will see a world that is in more need of the hope and joy of Easter, perhaps, than ever in our lifetimes. Now, we are called to live and to glorify the one who died for us in this world. But not only that, Christ promises to walk with us all the way through our darkest valleys to our highest mountaintop experiences. Because Christ is risen, it means that now we never walk alone, even now. Even when we feel alone, we are not alone. Because God walks with us. Because Christ is risen, it means we are loved. You are loved with an everlasting love that our mortal minds will never be able to fully comprehend. Because Christ is risen, it means we are renewed in life and hope. Because Christ is risen, it means we have a joy that can overcome external circumstance. Because our joy as Christians is not based on eternal, external circumstance, but on Jesus. Easter is the day that changed everything forever. Easter changes eternity. Easter changes our lives here and now, forever, once and for all. Because of Easter, we are now reconciled with our Creator. Sin and death are defeated and we are restored in life and hope. Hope means that when everything looks bad, we still believe that because of Jesus, everything will be okay in the end. And so if everything doesn't look okay, it's not the end. Christ has won. Easter has come. It doesn't mean everything's okay in the middle. It doesn't mean everything is good here and now to our mortal eyes. We still live in a broken world full of broken people like us. A sinful, fallen world where even the innocent suffer. But the hope we have in Easter means we know that no matter how dark it may seem in the middle, God's promises will not be proven invalid. God's act of redemption, God's omnipotent power at the cross and at Easter's empty tomb are real. More powerful than the grave. More powerful than our sin. More powerful than our guilt. More powerful than our fear. More powerful than our addictions. More powerful than our griefs and failures. More powerful than our emotions. More powerful than our worries. More powerful than our shame. This is Easter. This is resurrection. This is what it is for us to know and to walk with the risen Savior, Jesus Christ. Because of Easter, we now stand righteous and holy, clean before our perfect God. Not because we've earned our own merits before God, 
but because Jesus has made us right. Jesus has made us righteous. Jesus has washed us clean and imputed us, credited us with his own goodness. So now when God looks at us, he doesn't see wicked, fallen sinners anymore, but instead his own precious, precious children. Jesus has washed us clean. We are not who we think we are. We are not who we thought we were. But today, friends, because of Easter, we are who God says we are. And God looks at you and says, you are his precious, beloved child. All because Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Would you pray with me? Almighty God, all the forces of evil once thought they could keep Easter from coming. And at Good Friday's cross, when the world went dark and the whole earth shook, we thought perhaps for a moment that evil had triumphed. But then on the third day, Christ rose from the dead, proving his mastery, his lordship over all creation, life and death, earth and hell, sin and fear. So Jesus, on this Easter Sunday morning, as we, like those first disciples, are hidden away in fear, Yet, us, let, yet let us find the boldness of those women to meet the risen Christ even in these circumstances. To find that empty tomb and to meet the risen Christ. God, if there is anybody watching who is ready for the first time to give their lives to Jesus and to find this hope of Easter that we're talking about, let them do it. Or if somebody's ready to recommit their life to the risen Jesus of Easter, let them do it. We don't need some fancy ceremony. My goodness, we're not worshiping in any real kind of formal, fancy way anyway. But I pray, God, you would move those persons just to cry out right where they are, authentically, from their own hearts, in their own words to you, something like, Jesus, I confess I have messed up. I know that my sins have sent you to the cross, but I know you went willingly. You died to pay the punishment, the penalty for sin that I deserved. But you conquered death, you conquered hell, you conquered sin, you conquered the grave. And on Easter, you proved your lordship, your dominion, your mastery over all the universe, over time and space, over life and death, over me. And so, Jesus, I open my heart. I make you the Lord, the Savior, the master of my life. And I know, God, that because of Easter, because of Jesus, I am a different person today than I was before. So now use me, God, to live this different life, a better life, a born-again resurrection life, to bring hope to others, to be the hands and feet of Jesus Christ in this world, to seek justice, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with you, God, knowing that I will never walk alone, that you promise never to leave me, never to forsake me, to walk with me, even through the dark valleys of the shadows of life, around the pestilence and disease, God, still you are with us. Still your promise remains, and still this is Easter. And today we confess, though separate as one, that Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Amen.
celebration that Jesus is risen, I'm going to invite you to join me in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. There is so much going on in the life of the church. There are so many different things that we have been doing um, that we can be really excited about. And there's things coming up in the future that I want you guys to have the chance to know about so that we can continue to have an impact in our world. Uh, next Sunday, Diane Hotelling is going to um, be our main speaker um, for United Methodist Women's Sunday. But a huge event that's coming up, and hopefully it's right at, it's, it's, well after we can be all together again, is Vacation Bible School. And Vacation Bible School is scheduled for July 13th through 17th this year, and we are in need of volunteers, and we are looking for station leaders, crew leaders, puppeteers, kitchen staff, and more. If you're interested in, in volunteering for Vacation Bible School this year at CUMC, and we really hope it's going to be the biggest... Um, VBS we can have. Um, we're going to ask that you please email cumcvbs15 at gmail.com or reach out to Jen Harrison, Linda Lind, or Liz Griffin. Stay tuned. There's going to be more information about registration. Now, none of these things like Vacation Bible School or uh, our relationship with the Housing Resource Center or all the various things that we do um, none of those things happen on their own. They happen because people like you step up. People like you get engaged, they volunteer, and people like you give and support the ministries of the church. So I want to take uh, just a brief moment talking about online giving. It's super important that you give online. You can find our information at uh, cumcvb.org, and you can just click on Give, and uh, that will enable you to do that. Um, really easily and in a secure way through our Shelby Giving Systems. Uh, you also can use Bill Pay with your bank. You can call Melissa Snow, our office manager, and she can walk you through a direct deposit option for the church. Or you can simply mail in your check. We really care about the ministries of our church. And, and that's going to be super important as we continue um, in this season. So I hope you'll join us in our mission. Go forth into the world 
in whatever areas you can go, virtually, with your family, and hopefully someday soon together in Christian community. Let us go into the world and bear the light, the love, the hope of Easter in the name of Jesus Christ who has come, who has died, and who has risen again.